P-Wing F-22. Let's show you what this does. Welcome to Buddy RC. My name is Dan, and today we got the He Wing 400 millimeter F22 Raptor. We're going to have a build video. Let's get into it. What a fun plane it is. Okay, let's go over a few of the tools you're going to need to build the F22 Raptor from He Wing. You are going to need some foam tack, foam safe CA glue, or you're going to need a hot glue gun. You're gonna need some two-sided tape. I use uh, side cuts or sprue cutters. If you don't have these, you can use a standard razor knife. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to need a 1.3 hex head. When you get your He Wing F22 Raptor from Buddy RC, it's going to arrive in a box just like this. So let's open it up, see what's in the box. You will now, this does not come with instructions, but you can find them on our website. This is the PNP kit with flight controller. We also sell just the PNP kit. As you can see, it's very well packaged. All your parts are in a bag. So, that's a nice Ziploc bag. and they're all well labeled. This is your uh, control surfaces guides. This is your vertical fin alignment. This is your rudder surface fixing seat. Here is your fuselage half. Here's your nose. This is, uh, as you can see, they're very well laid out. Let's go over a few specs of this plane. So it is a 400 millimeter wingspan. It's 565 millimeters long. It is 130 millimeters high. It comes with a 12 amp ESC. You have a 1306 3700 kV motor. It has two five gram servos. All your mounting hardware, screws, push rods, zip ties, Everything is included in the PNP kit with flight controller. So the first thing you want to do is get the back half of the fuselage. You can see right here that it is labeled number one. And what I like to do is, of course, I take my side cuts and I cut it right up next to the fuselage. It's actually connected. Then you want to get this board here, which is labeled number two and then you're gonna cut out the front half of the fuselage. And like I said, you, if you don't have side cuts, you can use a razor knife. So what I like to do is at this time is the reason I have the tape is I will line up the hole here and the fuselage because you're going to need to glue this. And I like to tape it from the bottom side so it doesn't peel the decal or the paint off the front. So I'll just put two small pieces of tape here on the fuselage. And now what I will do is I will take my glue gun and you can see that it will fold in half. And then I will place a small bead of glue Get right down this. And then if you lay it on the table, it's already flat. Give it a few minutes for the glue to dry. I'd like to wipe off any excess glue. Hopefully you won't get too much on there, but sometimes it happens. So at this point, 
they recommend that you put assemble the bottom half of the aircraft. So now we are going to go, as you can see, they're individually marked. We're going to go in steps three, four, and five. So step three. Cut this out. Now some of you can also take a sanding stick and shave those down. That's fine. This is going to be the side plates of the bottom of the fuselage. I call it side plates. I actually don't know what it's called. But what you want to do is, as you can see, there's a decal on the outside, white on the inside. This is narrower, this is wider. So the narrower part goes to the back side. And it's fuselage is pre-cut. As you can see, there's holes already there. Apply a little glue. And then insert into the predetermined holes. And do this for both sides. And once again, give that a few minutes to dry. Now, I am going to skip step four because I have to install the motor, the electronics, all that into it. So, we'll set number four aside. Now this will also be a little easier, actually, if you go to step seven, because six is the top, and they, I prefer to work on everything on the bottom. So it is actually laying a little flat on the table when I go to glue it, mount it. Just makes it easier for me. And this, you are going to insert this one into the holes, but you're gonna to favor toward the back because the top one is going to go into the front. And if you would like, you can cut the top one off. I would highly recommend that you pre-fit everything just to make sure. Because nobody likes to put a plane together and find out that it doesn't fit. Now the nose will slide through the slot. And as you can tell, I put it in the slots and then I slide it forward. This will allow the bottom one to fit. You want to make sure this piece goes inside and then it, everything will fit nice and neatly into the back. Everything has a predetermined slot. So once that fits, I'll take the top off. And then we can glue the bottom one. And like I said, make sure it fits all the way to the back and you will see that it, the motor mount is going to be flush. Apply some glue. Slide it all the way back. Make sure it sits flush. And give that a few minutes to dry. Okay. So we will cut out the remainder part, the back half of the fuselage. This is number 10. This goes 
in the back half and once again the small part faces to the back of the aircraft. Hold that down. So now what I would like to do is we are going to take out the ESC, the motor, the flight controller, the motor mount, all your hardware. So they recommend that the ESC is mounted right here on the side and they give you a green zip tie to hold it in place. Nice and flush. Take your side cuts, cut off the excess. Now, unfortunately, I didn't mean to, but I did lie to you. You are going to need a small Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so you're going to need a small Phillips screwdriver. Now, at this point, I am going to mount the you get a small wooden plate at your motor mount. So now one thing I have found that the wires on the motor, you need to try to get them as flush as you can. The wider ones are the top and the bottom portions of your motor mount. If you try to mount it the other way, the screw holes will not line up or fit. I like to get the screw started, not too tight. You don't want to tighten it down because you might have to move it to match the bottom hole. Once you get... Okay. Now you can tighten it down because I've got one in each corner. The other two should line up no problem. Okay. So moving on. Now we are going to put on the control surfaces and the prop. Now the one thing I do want to emphasize, in your bag you're going to see a 40 by 45 prop and then you're going to see this tiny little plastic. This is not trash, this is actually very valuable. So this will need to be installed into the propeller in the center of the propeller you'll have a flat side and a round side. Okay, do not lose that or else it will not work. So let's install the control surfaces. So what you get is you get a clevis and a self-locking, I don't know what you call it. So basically you just want to be very careful install the clevis. Now you do see a round side and a flat side. The flat side goes toward the aircraft. Press it on, you'll hear it click. You have one control clevis installed. You will need four of these, two for the elevator, two for the ailerons. insert them into the pre-cut holes. That's the nice thing about this uh, kit. Everything is pre-cut, has its own place to go. It's kind of hard to mess this one up. Not saying that I couldn't do it, but it 
it's kind of hard. If you've never built one before, it's relatively pretty easy. Okay, so let's install the flight controller. The flight controller is in its own little bag, and you can see it has a little arrow on it. That means that is the front of the plane. One side's flat, the other one has all your aileron, sockets, ESC. You do get this, these two pieces of little 3M tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this to the back of the flight controller. Now me personally, I like to use both pieces. It just adds extra cushion for the flight controller. You don't need it, but if you have, I mean. Okay. Peel off the red tape. Now, make sure the arrow's forward. It's going to go in this slot right next to the ESC, and you're gonna push, I put it all the way up against the body of the fuselage. So you slide it in, get it as centered as you possibly can, press down. And your flight controller is installed. So let's get on to the servos. So the servos you want to mount with your wires toward the front and your servo arms out. These are not 360 degree servos, I call them 180s. So you definitely want to make sure you get the correct one on each side. What I do is I put it halfway in. I'll put a little bit of glue on the front and the back. I'll smash it down and let her dry. I am at this point I'm gonna cut a piece of foam off and wipe off the excess glue. Next time, I won't put as much glue on there. Okay, one servo done. Let's get the next one done. Okay, put a little glue. Not as much as last time, of course. Smash her down, let her dry. Okay, now, what is recommended, you're going to have four clevises, I call those clevises, those are control horns, my mistake. You've got four clevises, four push rods, two long, two short. These are for your ailerons and your elevators. So you are going to take this bent piece, insert it into the outer hole of the servo arm. Now your clevis is not a screw on clevis, it has a set screw on the outside. So in your bag you're going to have four coarse threaded screws. So the most important thing to is make sure this little screw hole is on the outside because when you install the vertical fins, you won't be able to make any adjustments. So I just slide it onto the push rod and they recommend that it's the second hole down. Snap it on, make sure your aileron is level. And then here's where you're gonna insert the 
the screw. This is your set screw that holds the clevis onto the push rod. And the reason you want it on the outside is if you ever have to make an adjustment, it's easily accessible. Tighten that down. Now from the aileron to the elevator, you're going to take a short push rod. Okay. And we're going to mount it into the top hole and do the same thing. Slide on your clevis, mount it into the top hole, snap it on, make sure your elevator is level. And I keep saying it, but make sure the hole on your clevis is toward the outside of the plane so you can make adjustments in the future. Okay, there we go. One side is done. Let's do the same for the other side. Okay. So now we are going to plug in the servos. So you have a left and a right. For some reason, this one side has two. The servo port is aileron to, is to the back. Okay, got your servos in. ESC. We're going to run through the same slot as the zip tie and they're marked, the uh, flight controller is marked on how your positive, negative, and signal wire. Okay, now it's time to install the propeller onto the motor. And you will understand why now that little piece is very valuable because that fits over the center shaft of the motor. You will need a 1.3 hex driver and the two remaining black screws are for your prop mount. Now you have four holes on the motor. Any two that will work. Tighten that up. And now we can put on the two remaining pieces for the top. At this point, I'm going to take the nose of the aircraft. We're going to put some glue on it and some spaces. Now, don't forget the part up front where the bottom piece connects. want to slide it on. Make sure this bottom piece connects and you're going to push it in and you want to make this even with the bottom piece vertically. And the reason is that's where the motor mount goes. can see on this there are a few there's a cutout where the motor mount goes I'm going to test fit it first make sure make sure your wires are going down and everything fits nicely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the motor mount and I'm going to put glue on the 
little tabs. Slide it in there, flush against the plane, make sure everything is squared up. Hold it there, give it a minute to dry. Now at this point you want to cut out the vertical tail angle fixing seat. So, I'll cut this out, and I am also going to cut out the vertical stabilizers. Now these are actually pretty symmetrical. So you want to make sure that you want to make sure you get the, the numbers and the letters and those are going to go to the outside of the plane because everybody wants to know it's an FF-069. So we're going to test fit that. You're going to take the vertical tail alignment. You got to put it over the tops. And as you can see, that gives that iconic F22 vertical stabilizer angle. So, I'm going to put some glue on this one. Some glue on this one. Do it quick. I'm gonna put the fin, or the angle gauge on there. Let it dry. And that's while that's drying. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the bottom plate. And now you understand why, even though it's labeled number four. I'm doing this last because once you glue this on everything is enclosed and it's hard to get into. Now it does require an S-Bus receiver. I am using the Crossfire receiver. All I did was take a servo lead, cut it soldered it up, positive, negative signal wire. And then I am going to plug it into the flight controller in the bottom. It shows the orientation, negative to the inside, signal wire to the outside. Once I connect the receiver, I'm going to take a little piece of two-sided tape and we're going to mount the receiver to the bottom of the aircraft. Now in the kit it is supplied a, I call it a female to female servo lead. If you don't use a Crossfire S-Bus receiver, you use another one. They do give you a connector for that. Okay. And then I'll just mount this to the bottom here while it's protected. And now my my crossfire has my crossfire has the uh, not the immortal T antenna. I've got I call it the whip antenna. I'll take two pieces of tape, tape that to the bottom of the fuselage, just so it stays in place. Velcro they're going to give you is for your battery strap. The battery goes 
The battery they recommend is a 500 to an 800 milliamp two cell with a JST connector. So the last step, make sure all your wires are tucked in. We're going to put on the bottom plate. Now the bottom plate, these small pieces go to the back of the aircraft. Put your wires in here. I'm going to test fit everything. Now this is where sometimes you could use a sanding block because that little, where I cut that off, it's holding it, it's stopping it from going in. Bottom plate, you want to put glue down the sides. Get one side in, press out on the other side, put the center hole in, the front of the fuselage will go into the slot here. Make sure everything is nice and flat. And of course you can take this off. And that is the build video of the He Wing F-22 Raptor. So I'm going to take my 800 2S. We're going to power up the aircraft. And as you can see, up, down, Left, right, left. Okay, so in my model, I just want to make sure if you're using the Crossfire S bus receiver, you want to hit your system button. I'm using the Radio Master TX16S. I go down to the TBS agent light and I want to select the XF Nano receiver. Now to get the crossfire to work, you want to go to the output map. And once the channel assignments come up, you will see that I changed output one to S bus. Crossfire will not work unless you change channel one to S bus. And you can hear the gyro in here working. Quite a bit of power. So there you have the He Wing F-22 Raptor build from, you can get yours at Buddy RC. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped. It is a very simple plane to put together. It's fun to fly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.